Hey folks, good uh, day to you. Today is Wednesday, July 22nd, 2020, and I think we've got a doozy of a trade for you guys today. Um, it's on Tesla, T-S-L-A. Before I jump into that, just real quickly here, want to give note on our current positions. It is about 6 a.m. Mountain Time. I'm about an hour and a half or so away from the market open here, but I wanted to get uh, this trade built to you so that we could get it to you ASAP today. Pretty excited about it, and I think it's going to be uh, a, a nice trade for us. But before we do that, let's look at our current positions. We do have EEM, which is expiring this week. We'll probably roll that unless we get another downturn in the marketplace. We've got a lot of room to continue to roll this, and I believe that that will continue to build for us as we go forward. Uh, we've got a lot of capital that we can add to that trade, almost double that trade if we need to. Uh, and so we'll probably be looking for a roll on that on Thursday, I would imagine, unless we get a big downdraft in the market in the next couple of days. Our Nike trade is doing awesome. There's nothing really that we need to do there. And our SPG trade, as you remember, SPG is reporting earnings July 29th after the bell. We may continue to just sit on our leap position here uh, going into that earnings announcement. And hopefully, hopefully, knock on wood, get a little bit of a bump. Uh, in SPG on that. But really no action needed today. <clears throat> Tomorrow, obviously Thursday, we'll do something probably with our EEM trade to continue to just roll that out. We do have a new trade for you today though, and that's Tesla, TSLA. Tesla is reporting earnings today after the market close. So uh, 2 p.m. Mountain Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, we're going to get, uh, well, it's usually about 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes after the closing bell. We're going to get the news report release on Tesla's earnings. This is always something that is highly anticipated, and we are going to do a very short term, just a couple of day trade on Tesla with regards to that. And as you know, we always are looking for a trading edge. We want to find an edge. That doesn't mean that we are going to have a guaranteed profit, but it does mean that we can exploit discrepancies in the market. And the way that we're looking to do that, it's always the same approach that we use. We obviously trade options. Options are a derivative uh, or they are derived uh, from some different underlying and the underlying that we're using here are equities or stocks. So options are obviously priced and based off of the price of whatever individual stock that we are trading. Sometimes those options are fairly priced, sometimes they're overpriced, sometimes they're underpriced. Generally speaking, when we find options that are underpriced relative to the derivative, relative to the underlying, if they're underpriced, you want to be buying those options. If they're overpriced, you want to be selling those options. And that's what we're looking for when we're trying to find what we call an edge in trading. We believe we have that today with Tesla uh, with regards to the fact that the options are overpriced. And we'll talk about that here in just a second. So again, as, they, as we know, they're reporting earnings after the uh, close today. We use a company called FactSheet. FactSheet is uh, uh, they, they basically are an aggregator for every analyst out there that uh, tracks and monitors Tesla. There's 23 major analysts on uh, Wall Street that in a lot of cases, it's not their sole job, but in some cases it is their sole job. These guys get paid, in some cases, a, a nice seven figure a year income to do nothing but just simply analyze these companies. And FactSheet takes uh, the average of all 23 of these analysts. And here's the ridiculous numbers that they've come up with. The, the, the uh, consensus is that Tesla is going to report a 14 cents per share loss on about $5.15 billion of revenue. Okay, that's the, that's the consensus, that's the average. 14 cent loss on 5.15 billion in revenue. However, if you break down those 23 analysts, the range that they are predicting from an individual basis is ridiculous. It goes anywhere from a loss of $2.53 on $2.77 million of revenue all the way up to an actual profit of $1.79 in earnings 
on 6.18 billion. So the range of estimates are anywhere from 253 loss per share to $1.79 profit per share, 200, uh, $2.77 billion in revenue or $6.18 billion. So in other words, they have no idea. They have absolutely no idea. No one has a clue what this earnings report is going to look like. But you guys know, even if you don't follow it, you've probably heard, at least in the news, what is happening with Tesla price-wise. And that has just been absolutely insane. Last week, uh, let's get rid of some of these places here. Last week, I believe it was possibly Wednesday or Thursday of last week, Tesla in one day, in one single day, I think it was right in here, uh, what was that, July 10th, maybe right in here, July 13th, in one day, Tesla went up in value more than what Ford Motor Company is worth in total. So in one day's appreciation, Tesla became worth more in that one day's worth of growth, just that one day of appreciation more than the sum total value of Ford Motor Corporation. Ford's obviously a, a profitable motor company, been around a century or so, and uh, Tesla's been around 10 years or so and has not made money. It is not a profitable company, but nevertheless, it gained value uh, just like crazy. It's been on an absolute tear uh, since uh, uh, late June to July. We've shot from the 900 range up here to this uh, almost $1,600 range today. Obviously, here before the market open right now, it's looking like uh, we're going to get a little pop to the open. Closed at 1568 uh, yesterday uh, on Tuesday, and it's looking at opening up around 1580, 1585. So the key here is that there is a difference between implied volatility and historical volatility. That is the key. If we take a look at the current uh, implied volatility in Tesla versus the current implied volatility in the S&P 500. So that is our control study right there. There's the implied volatility of the overall stock market. You can see where Tesla is. It is absolutely insane. So we need to talk about just for a second here, the difference between implied volatility and historic volatility. Implied volatility and historic volatility. So let's talk about implied volatility versus historical volatility. Implied volatility is what we are currently seeing in the option pricing. Okay, So if we look at these July 24th options that are expiring this coming Friday, we can see uh, what the implied volatility is. And it is absolutely off the, the it's it's off the scale it is ridiculous it's a hundred and seventy six percent implied volatility we've said that if you can't find a way to make money selling options on an underlying that has fifty percent implied volatility you're probably lacking in strategies and here we've just got an absolutely astro astronomical number 176 percent implied volatility that's incredibly high, and it's also much higher than Tesla normally is. So that's implied volatility. What the current options are implying the volatility or the potential move of the stock is. Now that's versus historical volatility. Historical volatility is the amount of volatility that a stock has actually had going back into the past. Now, it is not uncommon. In fact, it's actually probably more common than not that implied volatility or current volatility is going to be higher than historical volatility. And if you think about it, that kind of makes sense because in the present time, we don't obviously have the ability to have a crystal ball and know what tomorrow is going to bring. We don't know what the earnings report is going to be after the market closed this afternoon. It could be amazing. It could be horrible. We just don't know. That uncertainty raises volatility. So the lack of ability to foresee the future 
creates uncertainty. Uncertainty creates higher IV, higher implied volatility. Historically speaking, of course, we know what has happened. And generally speaking in life, and this is a good lesson for everything in life. This is a good lesson for reacting to disagreements or arguments with a loved one or a friend or anything in life. The reality of what we face is usually never as bad as what we conjure up in our mind. Once a result actually takes place, we find that the volatility, if you will, of that incident was much less than we had anticipated. But the fear of the unknown creates a high amount of volatility. So the point is that implied volatility typically can be his higher than historical volatility. But in this case, it is ridiculous ridiculously high. What does that mean? It means that I believe we have an edge in trading Tesla today. In other words, the implied move right now in Tesla. Now again, we're here pre-market open as I'm recording this, but right now the implied move for Tesla when its earnings report comes out later today is about $220. We're looking at about a $1,570 or $80 stock, and there's a $220 implied move. Now, we don't know, the options don't tell us whether that implied move is up or down, but that's the implied move. We should see a Tesla move $220, okay? That's what the options are are specifying. That is 61% greater than what the average move on Tesla has been if you go back historically on its earnings days. So that gives us an opportunity here to sell these near-term in our opinion very overpriced options, very overpriced options and collect some nice premium. So that's the concept of the trade. I'm going to build the trade here, obviously, in about an hour at the market open. And you should see, I think, uh, what we are talking about here in terms of the edge that this trade should give us. Okay, market opening up here in about six or seven seconds. Looks like we're going to have a nice pop to the open on Tesla. We'll let that trade for just a little bit, let the pricing start to flow. There you go. We're open. You see the pop there of about 35 bucks. We'll let that sit in here for about five minutes and then we'll execute our trade. Okay, we're open and running, obviously, and uh, Tesla is not surprisingly all over the map. It's been up as high almost as uh, 1620 and uh, it opened up around the 1600 mark. A um, lot of volatility, so I'm not going to give you a lot of pricing uh, directives on this trade simply because um, it most inevitably is going to be different. This this price could be 150 points different uh, in 15 minutes from now. And so I'm just going to give you the trade. You got to look at the pricing on your own, see if that makes sense uh, as we go forward here. We're looking at selling the call leg, only the call leg right now, simply because the skew is to the call side, meaning that the options are more expensive on the call side than on the put side. Now, I have no idea which way this is going to gap after earnings. It is interesting historically that the gap has been about 50-50, about 50% 50 of the upside, 50% of the downside. If I had to make a bet, I would probably bet that it's going to pop to the, to the, to the upside. Uh, just simply because of a couple of tweets that Elon Musk has put out late last night, sort of indicating some cockiness, if you will. But regardless, we're just going to put the colleague in today. And prices are, as I say, all over the map. I mean, that price is 35 cents. This has been up as high as two bucks. You're just going to have to kind of work this trade. We're going to be selling this short term option. It is the July 24th, just two days left to expiration date. Selling the 1990s and buying back the 2000s. And I'm going to try to price this uh, at around a dollar. Shows my net credit of 78 cents. That would be almost exactly a 10% rate of return. Now, I'm using three contracts. You can use whatever position sizing 
is appropriate for you, but I'm using three contracts. Uh, that's about $2,700. So again, I'm going to try to get this in at uh, a reasonable price. I got filled at that $0.78. Cents. I got filled at $0.78. Cents. So that's about a 10% rate of return in a three-day window. Again, price is fluctuating dramatically. It's dropped uh, almost 15 bucks since I put that trade in. So you got to watch your pricing. But uh, this is the trade. July 24th expiration date, selling the 1990 calls, buying the 2000 calls. I got to fill at 78 cents. That's about a 10% rate of return, cash on cash return in a three-day window.